If you want to lead the country, that means you need to have a clean image. You need to have all the factors that will make you better than the others. Corruption is a major obstacle for improving the quality of governance. This everybody would agree. Why? Because the human greed factor. If we don't bring in the centralization and if we allow people at the government level to make their own decision, that would again create chaos and confusion for the governance. Good morning and welcome to the first session, Chapter 3, Unit 3, 4th Semester, BBA, Good Governance in India, where we are going to speak about challenges before good governance in India. Now, when we talk about the word challenges itself, any idea, any vision that has been set up by the government will definitely have some or the other challenges. Why? Because we find that any policy cannot be implemented without any kind of barricades. So what are the challenges that we are seeing in terms of the factors against good governance? The first one is the criminalization of politics, which we are going to speak about. According to an Association of Democratic Reforms, 43% of parliament members in Rajya Sabha 2019 are facing criminal charges, 26% as that of 2014. It's an increase what we are seeing. Now imagine if you are a member of the parliament and you are facing a criminal charge which has been notified by the high court, the social media, as well as the public, then it becomes a matter of shame that you cannot be a good leader, you cannot be an example, and you will not be able to lead the nation from the front. Now, this is very important. Why? Because if you want to be a part of the governance mechanism, if you want to lead the country, that means you need to have a clean image. You need to have all the factors that will make you better than the others. But unfortunately, the criminalization of the political process and the unholy nexus between politicians, civil servants and business houses makes this entire process corrupt. Many a times in India, we have heard about scandals and scams which have been rocking the parliament, making them understand why and again and again, these people are disturbing the trust of people. Now, if you start looking into this factor, Whenever a public policy is being formulated, we need to see that the governance comes in a full fledge. The aim of a public policy is that it has good people who can monitor, who can see the implementation of it to the best level possible. But unfortunately, somewhere down the lane, that kind of factor of making the particular policy get into picture gets completely eroded. And the reason for that is we elect wrong people to the post. We elect those people who do not have the capacity to provide a clean image, who don't have the capacity to come out clean before the public. Now, the political class as such is losing respect. Therefore, it is necessary to amend Section 8 of Representation of People's Act 1951 to disqualify a person who has a criminal background. Now, whenever you talk to people about becoming a politician or you talk about politics, you never get a honest reply. You never get an appreciation for your talk. Even as a small kid, if you go back and tell your parents or your relatives, your friends, your society that you want to become a politician, nobody is going to appreciate that idea. People think that being a politician is the most easiest way to corrupt the society. Only a corrupt person can become a politician. That's what is the tagline that carries when it comes to the Indian politics. We need to change this image. Politician does not mean any kind of rough stuff. Politician does not mean any kind of hooliganism, any kind of activity that would demark the society, that would demotivate the society, that would disturb the minds of people. Politician means a leader 
who's been trusted, who's been bought by the people, who's representing their problems and tries to bring in a definitive solution. So keeping all this in mind, if we start understanding the process where if you find people who are actually being having criminal charges, you will have your rights to exercise from the Section 8 of Representation of People Act, where you can disqualify the person by saying that you are not eligible to become an MP or an MLA because you have criminal charges against you. Now, moving further, the word corruption. Corruption is a major obstacle for improving the quality of governance. This everybody would agree. Why? Because the human greed factor. Corruption is not just about taking money. That's the basic level of corruption. Corruption is all about going to the extent of asking more and more. Why? Because you start finding that this is the base where you start asking that I want more money, I want more of a, a particular thing and you start extending your needs and wants beyond the basic limits. Now, when you talk about corruption, the most interesting factor of this is that people would start getting into the corruption mode when they know there is an easy way to make money. Corruption leads to poor performance and we start seeing that the system gets weakened. Whenever you go to a government office in terms of getting a work done, you automatically start believing the easiest way to get a work done or a job done is by paying money. Now, when you start paying money, you are not only corrupting the system, but you are corrupting the entire process, trust and the governance in whole. Now, that is why we want to avoid corruption. We don't believe in corruption as a factor to get work done. This work could have been done if you would have followed the process so that everybody will gain trust on the service. But unfortunately, because of lack of patience, lack of time, we just want to cut short the entire thing. We jump the line. We start doing something which will weaken the process in the long run. Now, how do we stop corruption? That's more interesting for us. Why? Because we see that India's corruption rating is somewhere in the 80th position. So when you talk about development somewhere and look at India's rank being in the 80th position among the world countries, I think we don't stand a chance much to talk about governance. So the first thing that we need to do in order to avoid corruption is that we need to make the system more transparent. And that's where the digital India is an answer to that question. When we started emphasizing about digital India, we started telling people about the transparency factor. We want everybody to understand that each and every process, each and every system has got a complete transparency, has got factors through which we can learn and we can derive and grow further. So that's why corruption should be evolved, should be completely rooted out of India so that we can get a clean system. According to the gender disparity, now when we talk about it, we need to go back and understand what Swami Vivekananda had spoken about. It's impossible to to think about the welfare of the world unless the condition of women is improved it is impossible for a bird to fly on one wing so this is the right time for India to think that men and women are equal we cannot go back and underestimate the statement we cannot see any more atrocities happening against women we cannot go back and say that women are one step behind men no we have to change our mentality we have to start working to towards a nation that considers men and women as equal power. We need to stop all atrocities that are happening against women so that we can see the governance coming up. Now, one way to assist the state of nation is to study the 
status of women as women comprise 50% of the population that itself gives rise to that equality factor. So going forward, there should not be a statement against women. There should not be an act that will demoralize the society by doing something illegal against women. Therefore, in order to ensure good governance, it is essential that we understand the empowerment factor. So going forward, the most important thing is that it is not enough that we talk about reservation or quota for women. It is more essential that we give women the right place. We respect them. We put them forward as the symbol of culture in India. Moving further, the growing incidence of violence, which has been very, very common now, that whenever you look into it, it's considered to be a law and order problem. That's what we just ignore and go out. But then whenever you see those disturbing incidents that are being reported in the social media, whenever you see these kind of incidents being shot out at every social media platform or on your TV screens, that actually creates a very big setback to the governance model. Because that says that the peace of mind and order is being completely in dismay. Now we start looking forward, we start looking forward in terms of the factor that how governance can be brought in action, but these kind of disturbing acts actually create a mental retardness among the people. It puts the mind of people under question, under disparity, under uncertainty altogether. And that's why I would say that the principle of governance can be brought into action only when justice is being brought in action, when justice is being displayed in action. So that's why I would say that every citizen has the right to avail timely justice because for a common man what is very important is that the justice has to be provided on time. Every activity that is being done, every wrong that is being done in the society has to be questioned and the justice department has to come forward and give a timely action on that followed by the centralization of the administrative system. We have been speaking about this factor that the centralization has to come in. And there is a lot of factors when we talk about it. Why? Because this is very, very relevant today that we want to bring in the hub and the spoke model, which means to say that governments at the lower level should start making the Panchayat Raj and other institutions to work together for a common process. If we don't bring in the centralization and if we allow people at the government level to make their own decision, that would again create chaos and confusion for the governance. What we see in India is that at a district level administration, people often tend to take their own decision. They believe that they have the power to do whatever they want. And this reflects at the national level. So when we talk about the reflection here, we need to understand that if a function has to be carried out thoroughly, process wise and everybody has to get benefited from it. That means to say that the function has to be centralized. The power has to be centralized. It needs to come on a one line segment altogether so that we are able to deliver the final results correctly. Following which the marginalization. Now we need to see whenever we talk about the socially and economically backward sections of the society. They've always been taken aback. They've always been discarded. They've always been uh, moved away from the society. They've never been given that equal importance and equal factorization altogether. Why is this happening here in our country? Is because are they poor? We want to ignore them. We don't want to give them the equal value. Now those things cannot be taken forward because that will bring down the entire economic system and value of the country. So we need an upliftment where we are able to make them realize, understand that they are also equal 
equally important in the society. We cannot ignore them. What we are lagging today is that the education and economic well-being. We still believe that the divide of rich and poor continues and that's where India breaks down in terms of governance. As soon as possible, we need to stop the gap that is growing between the rich and poor so that we are able to get a good governance model. Now, the conclusion for this is that the effective functioning of governance is the prime function or prime need for every citizen in our country. They are ready to pay the price of it. So which means we must be ready to give the citizen what they want. There is a need to reformulate our national strategy according to the Gandhian principle that is Antyodaya, which means to say restore good governance back to the country. And we need to focus on developing probability, which makes the governance even more accessible. And last but not the least, we need to work on about the factor that was given up by our Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi where he said Sapka Saat and Sapka Vikas and Sapka Vishwas. Now that is very important. Why? Because we need to bring in this factor. We have to join hands together. It's a benefit for all. It's the trust of all and it's the growth of all that will make this country the most adorable, the most formidable and the most respected country in this world. With this, I would like to come to the conclusion of this particular syllabus and chapter of good governance in India. I hope and believe that all the factors that have been spoken through all these sessions would be of a great help to you, both in terms of theory as well as in the practical walk of life. Please do make note of all these important topics that will help you a lot in terms of scoring good marks in the exam. From my side, I would like to wish all the students the very best to do the in their exams and score very well. Thank you once again for joining me today on this wonderful session.